Uh, Mets were awful last night. Yankees continue to win. Nestor Cortez bounces back from a rare bad start last time out. Yankees now are 30 games over 500. Boomer's favorite offensive lineman met with the media yesterday. Makai Becton, I'm sure we will get into that as well. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Good morning. Clay Holmes now has 30 innings. Yeah, a little uh, dicey, but he, yeah, got yeah, but he got it done. That's got all that matters. Uh, yep. yeah, yeah, I felt like the Mets had one of those games yesterday where uh, if you win it, you win it, you know, uh, and you're like, okay, we, 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 we got through with somebody that we didn't expect to be, you know, great uh, as a starting pitcher or whatever the, the situation may be, but just one of those real flat games for them. Yeah. And um, so now they got to come back and they got to win the series. You know, interesting, I was looking at uh, Atlanta's stuff because Atlanta won again yeah, last night. Yeah, that's right. 14 straight now. Right. When you win 14 straight, you end up sweeping series. And you look who they beat, Pittsburgh, Washington, Oakland. I mean, this was, this was their chance to make their move, and certainly they have made their move. So now they're four games uh, behind you the New York Mets. You told me not that long ago. I believe it was last week, actually early in the week, that you did not want to see that lead less than five. Uh, that's, that's, that's when you would start to get a little uh, shrink or shrinkage. Right, and this is what I was getting afraid of. This is what I was afraid of. And, you know, now they still have uh, three games against the, the Cubs now. And, yep. then, and then they have the Giants and the Dodgers. So, like, the, these things always even out. Uh, the Mets got off to the great start. They were beating the teams they were supposed to beat. They were winning series and doing all of those little things. Um, you know, they had that little hiccup out there in, in L.A., and and sure enough, uh, here we are after Atlanta's playing the underbelly, soft belly of their schedule. The underbelly, yes. Whatever you want to call it, they are now four games out. But, you know, I just, uh, you know, they have to win series. The Mets have got to win series. That's what they had done and what they have done predominantly throughout the season. It's one of the reasons why they have 41 wins. But the Braves have 37 wins now. Yeah, they're 10 games over. 14, uh, think about this. Yep. 14 game winning streak. Yep. So prior to that, they were they were at 27 losses. They have remained there and they have now got themselves 10 games over 500. Well, so they were, yeah, they were four games under and now they're 10 games over. It's just amazing. like that. Right. And, you know, they're just, they just have a horrendous. Well, not so horrendous, but just an easy, easy schedule. Yeah, I mean, and everybody has those stretches in baseball in 162 games, especially with the way that some of these teams are just so bad. I mean, I it seems like every single year we talk about this, that there are, it's the haves and the have-nots of baseball, and this whole lockout didn't really help the have-nots all that much. And you get teams that don't want to spend. You get teams that are pathetic, like the Oakland A's. You get teams that never want to take the revenue-sharing money and actually spend it in any meaningful way, like the Pittsburgh Pirates. You get the Washington Nationals that had to break down everything after their World Series championship and trade everybody away to the Dodgers last year. And you get these miserable baseball teams that the good teams feast on. And you get the three or four of them in a row on your schedule. This is what you get. Well, you know, since... Uh Losing two out of three to Arizona back on June first, uh, they beat Arizona, and that's where that was the only game that they had won in that series at Arizona. Then they swept Colorado, swept Oakland, swept Pittsburgh, swept Washington, and now and now are at the Cubs. Yep, uh, you know, so that that may be one of the easiest, or I would say easiest, but maybe one of the worst grouping of teams all in a row for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, and I'm still not all that concerned because I still think with the adversity the Mets have faced with the injuries and all the issues that they have had and they've still been able to uh, keep themselves at, with the best record in the National League. I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm still not that concerned. I mean, I, even if the Braves came up and were a couple of games behind, I just feel like the Mets are going to win this division and they're definitely going to make the playoffs. Now you're dealing with a defending World Series champion and you always talk about the DNA of a champion well. and they definitely have it. Uh, even with uh, losing Albies for an extended period of time with the broken foot, uh, but you know, I just I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm confident in the group, and you know who's coming back. And now I I don't have the biggest uh, feeling of positivity around Jacob Degrom's return because every time he returns, he ends up getting hurt again. Uh, but you know, Scherzer's going to be back, and if Degrom comes back and he is dominant again, then all of a sudden you got the best rotation in baseball, just like that. Right, and and now you're also when you start looking at what the Mets are, are looking at in terms of their schedule. I mean, you know, you have obviously Milwaukee, and then it then it comes, you know, it's Miami for four. They're pesky. You always know that. Pesky uh, at Houston, 
Uh, Miami again, so they'll have seven out of their next nine games are going to be uh, against Miami. When you think about that, and uh, four out of their next 11 games are against the Houston Astros after they're done with uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, so things, it's... It's the ups and downs of a baseball season, it's, there, Boomer. It's a long season, man. Yeah, we've been a lot of been, things happen. We've been through this many times. Yeah, I just don't like the way we're going through it again right now. It kind of feels a little like last year. No, what are you talking about? I, I mean, no, I'm saying the brave from the brave standpoint. Oh, from the brave this standpoint, they, this is where they took off last year. No, it is, but the Mets simultaneously were losing a ton of games. Well, we also think that it's it has a lot to do with Buck Walter keeping the team focused and keeping them going. So. Uh, so whatever you want, you have you have to win today's game. You have to. You just you just have to. You know, and I know it's what game sixty five or something or so. You have to win this game. You you're talking to. about the must win is, uh, must win Thursday. And this here. is Tyler McGill back on the mound. Yeah, that's right. Which is nice to get him back because it was we talked so much about Scherzer and Degrom being out. And McGill was pitching great. For a majority before he ended up, you could tell there was an injury and he got battered around that last start. So getting him back is a right. huge boost. You know, um, something else. We, we did have a bet or we did make a bet. Yeah. And I set the over under at 385 for uh, the big man, Makai Becton. Yeah. I had faith in him. I said, uh, I think he's going to show up in shape. I think that all the motivation that he had where... You know, he wore that shirt yesterday, too. Uh, he can wear any shirt he wants. He wore that shirt. He was yeah. a big bust and around it. He had uh, words and criticisms that people would say, you know, fat and out of shape and injury prone and bust and all of these things around the big bust in the middle. So he's he's really showing everybody who's criticizing him, apparently. That's what he thinks. I, I would say looking at him in his clothes, as opposed to on the football field, this guy is approaching 400 pounds. To me, he looks like he weighs somewhere between 395 and 400. Okay. That is not good. It's not good for him health-wise, first and foremost. His health is not going to be good. And I mean all sorts of things. I'm not just talking about his ankle or his knee or anything else. I'm just I'm talking about everything in general. 400 pounds is not a healthy human being. It's just no, not. I mean, even even at his size. I mean, I don't know how, how many people in NFL history have played that position at 400 pounds. I would bet. I would bet. I would bet. I don't know. I'd probably bet a hundred hundred dollars that he's over three eighty uh, three ninety five. He's over three ninety five. Uh huh. Okay. So you would you one of those guys that guesses the weights at carnivals and then can end up? I I can. I know what I'm looking at. You know I'm looking, what you're I'm, looking at. I'm looking at an unhealthy guy, and I'm looking at a guy who can wear a t-shirt, who can do uh, whatever he wants on Instagram. It it really is. I I was waiting to see what this looked like, and this ain't good. This ain't good. So between three ninety five and four hundred, yep. yeah, that's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay, north of three ninety five, and the Jets have themselves a major problem, a major problem. And you know, Rob Sala's got to do what Rob Sala's got to do. He's got to be supportive. He's got to try to manipulate the media. Doesn't want to come out and just absolutely completely dump on the kid because you know that's not how Sala you know reacts or talks about players. So I don't expect anything really. Of substance from him, but you can read between the lines. I mean, they're not. They, there's no way they could be happy with him. No way. Anybody Absolutely. ask him directly how much he weighed? They had to have yesterday, right? Yeah, I don't think anybody. I, I don't how could think you either. Not? Be I like, hey, what was that number when you got on that scale, big fella? Hmm. Don't, don't you don't you hop on the scale when you first get here? What is it? Are you at the playing weight that the Jets want you to be? Or ask Rob Sala, is Makai Becton where you want him to be? I, I think they did ask both men, and I, I think both men just, you know, were, didn't really want to be specific about anything. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I kind of understand why, but this guy is. He's now throwing he, away his career in your eyes. I, in my eyes, yeah. yes. I, I wonder if he even sees the field for the Jets, honestly. honestly. Really? At, th at this weight? I mean, this is supposedly. Well, like, we're sitting here in June. Dude, we got some time. He could he could drop thirty. A guy like that could drop thirty five pounds in oh really a month. Well, if he could do that, why hasn't he already done it? Well, now he's back and he's working out. And you how know? long is he going to be here? Uh, that I don't know. What yeah, is it? Two about weeks? It is, yeah. Hey, once he's out of, out of sight, out of mind, forget it. Who knows what he's going to come back so, as? You think like training camp is a chance he gets even bigger? I'm thinking a training camp he could get cut. No, I, cut. 
I'm just I mean, he was, he, he, this was the first round draft choice for them just a couple years ago. He had a great rookie season. Yeah, and, I, 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 yeah I don't think the owner is going to want to cut him, but I'm sure that there are a few people in that front office that probably are a little disgusted. Well, I mean, him. I'm sure Joe Douglas isn't happy about this. That's his draft pick, man. He needs him to work out. He had got to give him every opportunity to do so, kid, right? You know, this kid wearing bus T-shirts and all this other crap. I mean, look, man, you're either 365 or you're not. And if you're not, you're overweight. And if you're overweight, you can't play. You just can't play. Yeah. If he's 370 or something, then I'll take everything back that I'm, that I'm saying right now. He looks to me like he is well, well over 390. You know, all this stuff on Instagram, and it, it's, it's, none of it means anything. It's, the proof is in the performance, and it, and it is in what you can see. And what we really now see is a guy who has not done what he's supposed to be doing. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.